Welcome to another exciting episode of Doug's Electronic Repair Bench. Afternoon, YouTube. Here with you this afternoon to uh, do what I was planning to do yesterday, which is start on the calibration attempt of the Fluke uh, meter, which does not, uh, shall we say, measure accurately. Uh, <laughs> I uh, I'm printing out the uh, the calibration uh, procedure on the printer now, so. Uh, as soon as that's done, I'll, I'll go ahead and get everything set up and we'll uh, start on this and see what we can find out. Stay tuned. Alright, uh, YouTube, I am back once again. As you can see, that one's reading 29.4. That one's reading 29.4. I have went through the... Uh, calibration procedure and calibrated it to this this one here and I, if you can I don't know if you can catch both of them at the same time maybe all right I think you can see both of them now I've got it on the uh, camera boom uh, I'm gonna go up with the uh, variac and you can watch and see what happens I'll stop every once in a while and see how it st stabilizes you can see there 49.67 whatever whatever they, they stay the same Go on up to 75 volts. Still stable. Looking good. On up to 100. 105. Perfect. I think you can see that. Um, you can pause the video if you want and uh, check the if you can't see both of them at the same time. It's pretty easy to do. I'll go on up to 120 just to see. There's 125. Pretty darn close. Stays just about the same. I mean, you're not going to get it exactly the same to, to read them exactly the same, but it uh, it'll it'll be okay. And I did the DC calibration also. Um, I can show you that too. Uh, let me get the set up for that. Now for this one we're gonna go on to DC 2 volts. DC 2 volts. And we are going to hook up our leads to the uh, output of this battery. And get a reading on both meters here very shortly. You're getting one there, 1.236 have the other one here in just a second. There we go. Now that's DC voltage 1.236 is what it's measuring. It's the same battery hooked up to the same terminal and everything so uh, this was the only uh, calibration needed according to the calibration sheet is the low low voltage on 2.2 2 volts um, so it's working rather well I think so both of the uh, AC and the DC were out um, I noticed on the uh, board where they're at it's it's very very possible that with all the fiddling I did with these meters or well, actually with the one meter uh, the original one it's very possible that I they are both on the edge, in fact there's three of them, on the edge of the board and it's very possible that I just hit it and knocked it out. So, you know, that may be all it was. But I just wanted to show you that they are calibrated now together anyway, so that's a, a good thing. And uh, I would, I'm, I flashed the uh, procedure up there on the, uh, on the um, screen so that you can see it. It's really kind of simple. You basically do the DC first and then the AC and there's actually two parts of the AC, a high and a low. Um, 
I didn't have to touch the the, the last uh, pot, which is R21, I believe. Uh, it was it was perfect. There was no problem with it. So, anywho, that's uh, all I've got on that. So, one more step done, and one more one more piece of equipment ready to use. So that's good. And uh, that's about all I'm going to do. And that battery is a is pretty much a dead battery. <laughs> not dead, but I mean it's it's a used battery. It's it's not you know not a, a new one by any means. Uh, probably would have been better if I'd had a new one because I could have got the uh, as you can see on the if you looked at the calibration uh, for this you saw that the uh, actual calibration voltage was supposed to be 1.888 I think and uh, so I figure if it works here it's going to work anywhere so I can when I do some more voltage checking and things like that for different things I can I can verify it. Um, Trying to think something I had real quick. I could, well, I could, I could do the nine volt battery. Let's let's try that just to see. In fact, I've got one over here. Let's let's see what it measures. Uh, this is a pretty much dead one, so it probably won't measure much, but it may measure enough to where I'll put it on 20 volts. This time, I'm going to hook up the leads before I. before I turn them on see if that makes any difference shouldn't alright we're hooked up on that and there we go now you can see the uh, pretty close it stays it fluctuates a little bit once it settles down it should be alright it looks like it's drawing like I said that's a dead battery so it's it's kinda hard to measure those but that's close enough for, as they say, state work. So, I'm not going to complain about that. I could hook up the uh, the other 9 volt battery, the one I use for my uh, tester, component tester. I think it's eight, it down to 8 point something. But uh, anyway, I just wanted to show you that those uh, those are pretty close. So, you know. Yeah, it's hard to say how it'll, it'll measure on higher ranges once I get, you know, something higher to, to measure. But I will double check it even then and see. But uh, I think for right now, I think it's pretty darn stable. And I can't complain about it at all. So I am going to count that good. And get rid of these. I don't, I don't know why I keep dead batteries around. I do. And I, I don't know if you guys do or not, but... Um, Every once in a while, you, you need something for this or that, and, you know, it's nice to have a dead battery. <laughs> Let me turn this off and get back to the other one. Alright, there you have the uh, calibration on the uh, Fluke 8010A. Um, again, I didn't do it on camera because it was really a little difficult to watch both... <laughs> meters and me adjust at the same time while I was trying to film it, record it. So I didn't do that, but that's the outcome and, and the, the procedure is what I followed on uh, that I flashed on the screen there, the calibration procedure. And uh, you, you notice on the uh, the red parts at 8012A only, that's for, for the uh, low ohms function of the 8012A, which this 8010A doesn't have obviously. So um, obviously didn't do those so anywho um, I'm glad that uh, they are that was all it was, it was a matter of calibration and it didn't seem to be any problem with it otherwise so I think we'll be okay with that and I probably what I'm gonna probably do is set that one up as my meter uh, my bench meter and use the other one as a backup uh, I kind of like to keep an eye on it, make sure it's reading right. And I've got my portable DMM here that I can verify things with it for a while if I need to, especially on the higher DC voltages. So we'll do that, and uh, that should be about it on that. Um, huh. After my little ranch yesterday, I uh, I got to looking at this again. I think what I'm going to do is take one box at a time, set it up here, go through it. 
sort it to where if there's just like this one here has got mostly power cords in it I need to get it break it down to all power cords and take everything else out and maybe box it up to where it's it can be set up on a shelf somewhere and gotten out of the way um, as I say one one thing at a time I'm gonna go through that also I think I'm gonna take my new label maker that I have never used yet and do some work with it I want to I want to put some labels on the uh, variac output and uh, once I get the dimbo working right the way I want it I'll put some labels on it also on that large uh, uh, file cabinet or drawer cabinet whatever you want to call it um, up there I'm going to try to get that down and label that I've got my new old stock resistors in there and they're just about gone in a lot of them are out of value or out of tolerance anyway so uh, I want to label those drawers the way basically the way I've got those labeled is a 10 12 uh, 15 um, I don't know if there's another one or not but anyway whatever the common values are and then I, I put all those values whether it's 1 1.2 or 12 or 120 or whatever it is in the same drawer uh, that's the way I've always done it it just seems handy enough that you can reach in there and get what you want out of it and once I get my resistor assortment I think that that comes in a box and it's all sorted out so I want to worry about that anymore but for those that want to do that and there's plenty of drawers left for capacitors and other small parts and eventually I want to buy another drawer like that and probably set it on this shelf over here and uh, do that so also, I was thinking, uh, making a, a list. <laughs> I, I sometimes make lists like that to, to think, get things, make a list of all my projects and try to prioritize them as far as which ones need to be getting gotten parts for, uh, which ones are just ready to work on, just which ones need whatever, you know, and put that in a list and then try to follow that list uh, at least in between other things I'm working on so basically if I have a new something comes in the mail I may go ahead and do that but and then as soon as that's done uh, I'll go back to what the list and try to try to do that it's gonna be hard for me especially because I'm just not that kind of organized <laughs> so uh, you guys you guys all know what I'm talking about I think and and so and for Robert out there um, yeah, I've got my, that was my capacitor tester, or condenser checker that uh, you saw on the floor yesterday, if you saw it. I noticed when I did the uh, video that there was several things in there that didn't show because of that window, because of the lighting. I apologize for that, but, you know, when you're, when you're uh, recording, you can't always tell by that little screen what you're getting and what you're not getting, so. Anywho, that's that, and uh, also, uh, the shelf, the last shelf I showed you was over against the wall over there um, that used to sit here where the new shelves are I think that's what I'm gonna try to put over here because I'm not gonna it's it's just it's not not good practice I don't think to tear that one apart over there to put the bottom here it just doesn't make sense that's got three shelves on it it will fit under there and I can organize with that so there's not that much on that shelf uh, a lot of that stuff needs to go out to the garage and so I'm, I'm trying <laughs> you guys uh, know what I'm talking about yeah I know everybody everybody that puts videos up that does work like this or even in a garage or whatever you guys know that uh, your garage stays messy part most of the time I mean that's yeah, just the way it is it, somebody said if it was if it's clean then you're not doing any work <laughs> which is true but in my case I'm not doing work and it's not clean either so <laughs> Anyway, um, I think that's about it. Like I say, the Julia, I'm waiting on parts for that. They should be in hopefully this week. One coming from Canada. I don't think that'll be here quickly. Uh, it's been my experience. It takes a little while to get things from Canada. Uh, the rest of the stuff from the States. So hopefully that'll arrive next week. When I say next week, I'm talking about this this week. This is Sunday, so this beginning of the week. Um, like I say, that's about it for now. I don't really have much more to do. Uh, that was basically all I wanted to do was calibration of that meter and I'm really happy with that that it, it calibrated just fine and it's I think it'll be very useful so happy that uh, it was it was not a bad bad deal um, 
you know, after I got the, uh, figured out the switch problem, uh, everything come out real good, I think, so. Anywho, that's about all I have for now, guys. You guys have a pleasant rest of the day, and I appreciate you watching, I really do. I'll see ya.